everyone, Tom Greaves here from Dot Product. In this video, we're going to show how to use Survey Control to georeference and register two point clouds together. The data I'm about to show you comes from Step Change Engineering in Aberdeen, one of our customers, and they gra have graciously provided it to us. Uh, the survey was done uh, with some hand measurements uh, using a tape measure. Uh, so, uh, not total station grade, but uh, as you'll see, the results are very, very good. So the first thing I'm going to do is load up the control file. To get at it, I use ES File Explorer, and I go to the memory here, down to Targets, and the file is called Office underscore Targets dot CSV. Let me point out a couple of characteristics of this uh, survey control file. First of all, we have five rows. This is one row for each uh, target. And the first field uh, in each row is the target ID. So we've got a very simple nomenclature here. So the first row is target 1, and the x, y, z coordinate is 0, 0, 0. We can also use. Um, target ID northing easting elevation. Uh, that's a, a, a recognized target format. Uh, quite common among surveyors actually to use northing easting elevation and in this case uh, we would specify a left-handed coordinate system. Uh, I'll show you that in just a few minutes. So that's the uh, control file here. You can edit this file in Excel or a text editor. A uh, very simple file format. Next, we're going to have a look at uh, a photograph of the scene. And here I've drawn in some axes. Uh, we use the standard uh, convention that you'll find in CAD that the x-axis is red, the green axis is y, and the blue axis is the uh, z-axis. And uh, the target identifiers are indicated on the, on the photograph here. So target 1, 0, 1 is the origin, um, and from that emanates the X, the Y, and the Z. Uh, target number two is just under the desk. Note that we're not using this target on top of the desk. Uh, target number three is up against the wall here. Target number four is on another desk, and target number five is on this uh, wall column. So the, the very nice people at uh, Step Change Engineering measured the location of these targets, and the reference is or the origin for this is target number one. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go back and load Phi 3D and get get cracking here. So I load Phi 3D. I load the scene, and the first file I'm going to load here is Office One DP, and you should note that. This is an unoptimized file. So um, we're going to be using the targets in a hard target mode, whereby we're going to scale and uh, register the data. So I load this file number one, Office One. And we have a look around. And we can see target one, target two, target three target 4, but not target 5. Okay, and then we'll just have a quick look at uh, file number Office 2. And we can see target 2, target 1, target 3, target 4, and there is target 5. Okay, so we've got our minimum of three overlapping targets uh, in, in the two scenes. That's what's required uh, for the registration process. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, when I have file one loaded up, is select the target mode. And the software runs through and looks for those uh, chessboard targets uh, in the scene that we've collected. That just takes a few seconds. Uh, then I'm going to hit the Manage Targets button to load the control file. We're going to load, load from file. And I scroll down to Targets, and there I find it, the office targets.csv file. 
And just to verify that we get a chance to have a look at that file, that's fine. We're going to use that. <clears throat> and now it's a question of associating the targets that we've identified with the target list. So I pick the first frame in which I can see a target. And this is target number 1. So I set target ID and I've associated with target number 1. So note that the indicator down on the lower right hand side indicates two targets to go, meaning that we need to have a minimum of three targets to do the uh, rotation and translation math uh, into the survey control uh, coordinate system of, of, the, uh, of the data we've captured. We should also note a couple of other things here before we get too much farther along, that the units uh, have to be correct for the control file. Uh, the units in this case are in meters, but if your control file uh, had been captured in feet or inches or millimeters, this would be the place to specify it. So we're going to stay with meters. And also up here, there's a selection box for left-handed system. I'll deselect it. If you're using a, a control file that is northing, easting elevation, then you're going to want to use the left-handed system. OK, so we're going to go back to associating targets. And we're going to pick this target again, target number one. And note that we can have uh, the same target selected in multiple scenes, multiple frames, but we can only select one target per frame. That's all that's allowed. OK, then we come down here. And this is target number two. We go back. And we'll pick target number two in this frame again. Two. And we go back. Um, we could pick this one. Oh, no, we can't. We don't want to pick that this one up here anyway because, oh, no, we don't want that because we have um, not surveyed in the location of that file. So I'm going to just go back and pick this one. And this is target number two back, scroll down. This is target number three. Back. And what I've got now I've got three targets. The message saying I need to first it says need three targets and you need two targets. Now we don't need any more. We're good to go from here. But it's a good practice to pick uh, these targets in multiple frames. So this is target number three. Back. And scroll down. This is target number four. Back. And target number four. Back. Okay, so now we're all done with the target selection. There is one up here in the upper left-hand corner. This is uh, target number one, but I'm not going to pick it. And the reason for that is it's on the periphery of the scene, and it's just a little bit fuzzy. So that's not going to add to the to the quality of this. So what we're going to do next is fit all targets. So I get this message. Uh, four unique control targets have been matched to nine detections. OK, so we're going to go back and have a look at this. Go back. And what we'll see when we look at the data is that there's a little red circle uh, inside the green circle. And so this is where the software has, this is an indicator where the software thinks the, uh, the target is. And so these little red circles should line up inside the green circles. And if they don't, there's a problem. Go back. We just have a quick look through this, this data set. Looks fine. All of the, uh, the circles line up the way we'd hope. And what we're going to do here is, uh, next we're going to optimize this data. So, sorry, we're going to optimize it. And we have a, target, a bunch of targeting modes to select here. Hard, soft, correspondences, or no targeting. In this case, we're going to select a hard targeting mode. So this will both scale. Georeference and, and register the 
well, not both. It, it will do three things. It will scale the data uh, according to the control file. It will georeference the data, and uh, it's also going to be used for the for the registration process. So we run this optimization. Okay, so now we've done the processing of the first file. The next thing I'm going to do is save this optimized file. So we'll save the scene. And I'm going to use a convention that uh, works for me. I'm going to indicate that it's been optimized by putting an underscore O in the file name. And then I'm also going to put an underscore T to indicate that it's uh, I've used targets. And I'll save it in the binary file format, continue. And in the save options, we have a choice of specifying no coordinate system, uh, control targets, or uh, Z up for the applied transform. Uh, as we've just gone to some pains to use the control targets, that's, of course, the the, the choice that we want. Uh, none of these other choices make sense when we're using survey control. So we'll save that file. Okay, next we're going to apply the targets to file number two. So we load the file here. There we go. And we'll do the targeting. So the software runs through and looks for the checkerboard targets. We have to load the target file again. So this is target number two. Target number two again. Target number four. Here's target number five. Again, we can have the same target in multiple frames. We just can't use more than one target in a single frame. There we go. We'll fit the targets. We have a 16 millimeter RMS on this. That's uh, probably what we should expect with hand measurements. And the red circles are inside the green circles, indicating we have a decent fit. OK, now we're going to optimize the data. We're going to use the hard targeting mode, run the global optimization. Okay, now the post-processing is finished. File looks fine. What we'll do is save this. And I'm going to use the same convention as before. I'm going to put an underscore O to indicate that it's been optimized, an underscore T to indicate it's been targeted. Continue. We'll use the same uh, control target uh, transformation. Save that. OK, so next what we want to do is bring these files uh, from the tablet over to a uh, software application. I'm going to use Recap, and we'll see how the registration looks. OK, the first thing we're going to do is copy these optimized files from the tablet uh, to my laptop. And I'm just going to put them on the desktop. 
in the point clouds folder. And then I have a copy of Recap open. I'm going to create a new project. And we're going to call this Office Targets. Proceed. And we'll select the files to import. We want these two files open. I'm going to set the decimation down to zero and we'll index the files. Then we'll launch the project. So we have both files. A couple of things to observe. That the origin the ground plane is at this height. That's because we set the origin at target number one right here. I'm going to switch to a uh, ortho view. You can definitely see we have two scans here. Uh, they were taken in slightly different lighting conditions, maybe different times of day. The alignment is quite good, particularly for a hand measurement, uh, you know, with a tape measure. One of the things we can do here is toggle the two scans. So I'm going to toggle number scan number two on and off like this. There, there it's off, there it's on, there it's on. So there's the alignment. So we both registered and georeferenced the data using targets.